everybody, what's going on? This is always before you, and I want to do a, uh, uh, a, a long-term follow-up video on the ULA circuit. I made a video a long time ago, and it was when I, f I was getting into backpacking. Um, I've always been into camping, always been into the outdoors, but uh, maybe two years ago, three years ago, I really turned over the stone and I got into backpacking. Well, my first foray into backpacking was to go to the major stores. I went to REI. Um, I'm in New Jersey, so I have Camp More. If you get any of the outdoor magazines, you've probably seen Camp More in the back. It's a fantastic store. But my point there is, is that if you don't do a little research, you're going to find yourself buying the big name brand things. And while you can get your pack weight down, if you're even conscious enough to know that you want to, by default, if you go into one of those stores and say you want to get into backpacking, you're going to have a heavy load on your back. By heavy load, that's really variable depending on where you're going, time of year, etc. But I'd say for most people, you'd be very, very lucky to be going on a, say a three or four day trip with anything under 40 to 45 pounds on your back. Uh, all things considered, that being with food and water, but you know, out the door, it's going to be pretty heavy. So having said all that, my first trip, I um, was using one of the other packs that I was just mentioning that I did this video on, which I'll just, I'll have come up in the video right here. You can look at those if you're, if you're interested or if you want to reference that. Uh, they are good packs. They're very durable. They have a lot of great features. But I learned, I guess, the hard way, uh, the benefits of going lightweight. Um, if you're watching this video, you're probably already familiar with the circuit. You uh, might know ULA and a lot of the other boutique manufacturers and the little kind of mom and pop places. But um, if not, I just wanted to um, share with you my experiences with this pack. Uh, I think I've had it about a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. Put some serious miles on it. Uh, it's been to Phantom Ranch. I took it down in Grand Canyon. Uh, it's been up to Mount Washington, the White Mountains in New Hampshire. Uh, Zion National Park and uh, a lot of hiking here in the New Jersey, New York area, which is where I'm from. So it got lots of trips on it, lots of miles. And having done all that, I can uh, comfortably now make a video saying how much I really, really enjoy this pack. I knew it, honestly, from my first trip. By the end of my first trip, I knew that the fit was right. You know, you have to wear it for a little while to, to figure that out. But I knew the fit was good for me. It was so much more comfortable. And uh, in addition to the pack, uh, of course, I had lightened out all my other gear. But uh, referencing just the pack itself, let me uh, just tell you what I like about it. I'm not going to go into all the details. You can get all this information about you know the specifics of the volume and everything else and all the nitty gritties on their site. Um, I just want to share with you just a couple key points, uh, things that I like or or you know, really cool things that I'd like to, to highlight upon. So, one of the main things I really, really like about this pack is the pockets here on the hip belt. And I can't stress that enough. Um, it might not be important to you. I see so many packs out there that don't have any pockets at all. And I can't fathom that. I can't understand why you would have this amount of real estate coming right in front of your body, a place where it's so easy to grab something and how the manufacturers don't utilize that. They don't put a pack or a, a pocket in there. Or sometimes you'll notice they'll put a pocket in here, but they won't carve out any material. They won't actually make a pocket. It'll just be like a little flap, this little slit of, you know, you could put in barely a deck of cards, or you could squeeze like a cliff bar in there if you're lucky. I don't understand the point of doing any of that. To me, you know, <laughs> big pockets in front should be standard. Um, if you choose not to fill them, you choose not to fill them, but there's so much that we don't want to have to stop and take our pack off for. Or we don't want it, you know, bobbling around in our pockets, you know, hitting us and, you know, just kind of a momentum killer. And here, you don't feel it. It's tight to your body, and um, it, it's just, it just makes sense to me. So what I really like, not only are they here, but they're huge. These pockets are huge. So let me show you. I just kind of loaded this one up here, but I mean, it's not loaded to the point where, you know, I could open it super easily. There's no tension or anything on it. 
Uh, first of all, something I always do, and this is my big thing about having pockets up front, I always like to have my camera at the ready. That's paramount to me when I'm in the outdoors. I always am taking photographs, uh, but I want to be able for quick access. You know, if you're going down the trail and you spot, you know, something off in the distance, say it's an animal that you know is really rare. You know, say you're seeing, you're on the west coast and you see some big brown bear and it's just, you know, some beautiful setting or whatever it is that you see, some gorgeous fox on a hill. With animals, the moment is always fleeting. They're probably going to be aware of you very soon if you got lucky enough to come across them. Um, and if you're someone who's into photography, seconds are, are like an eternity. You do not have time to go into your pack to get your camera, nor can you afford to make that noise. So to have your camera right there in your pocket that you can just go in quietly and quickly without having to move your body a lot and get it, to me is critical. If you're not into photography, you know, whatever. You could, you know, they're, they're useful for a million other things, but to me this is the biggie, have my camera at the ready. Of course, it kind of defines this type and the size of camera you can carry. You're not going to fit an SLR in there, but for a lot of the smaller mega zoom point and shoots, uh, or just any of your generally compact cameras. This is not a very, very small camera. This is a, kind of a, a mid-sized compact. I think this is like a 20x zoom. Uh, you could have it right there at, at your side. So that's my main thing with the pockets is the camera. But let me just pull out some other stuff here so you can see how much it holds. Camera, Advil, lighter, iPhone, a huge uh, brick of a energy bar, which is about the same size as the camera, uh, one spare battery, two spare battery, <laughs> and I think that's it. And then I just have a Ziploc bag in here. I usually have that for my camera. I put it in there in case it rains, this way I can still have it close, but not worry about it getting wet. And honestly, I could have fit probably, oh, I don't know, another few things in there if I really want to load it up, but that's one pocket out of two. And we fit all this stuff in there. So big, big props to ULA for these pockets. Um, like I said, my pack here is about a year and a half, two years old. I know they still utilize the same design. I was just checking out their site before I made this video. They do a little, uh, have some cool colors now. They have some camo colors and everything, but I uh, just can't say enough about having those pockets there. To me, it's just a, it's an absolute no-brainer. So that's the one thing I really wanted to harp on. Um, with regard to the other stuff, when I bought my pack, I was um, I was really trying to figure out about the uh, the S strap or the J strap with regard to these guys here, because I'm going to tell you about a little incident that I had or an issue I had, only because you may be experiencing the same thing. I think it's pretty rare, but in case somebody else out there is having this, you know, you can maybe identify and maybe this will help you. I have this thing where I'm wearing my pack. I'm a pretty slim guy, but my chest, just like the dimensions of it, it kind of like pushes straps off it. I guess my chest is like a little bit bigger here, you know, I go to the gym, whatever. And it's like my straps don't, ne they never want to sit here. They always want to like come like really across, like down across my armpit here. And, and what ends up happening is there's a nerve there. And I've been hiking uh, my previous packs, the way they laid, no matter how I adjusted the load lifters, or even if I had hardly any weight on the straps themselves, just the way they would lay across my chest would hit this nerve, and it would hurt like hell. I mean, I had to at point uh, drops my, my pack off because I just couldn't bear it anymore. And again, that's with like loosening it up. So that was critical to me, was to try to find a pack whereas the straps, you know, just had a little bit of a, a different fit. And I know this is really relative to everybody's body type and, and stuff like that. Um, but what I would say is it's a cool option that ULA offers not only the uh, J straps, which is what I ended up going with. They said they're the more traditional. They said that usually um, men prefer the J strap and women prefer the S strap. And my first inclination was to get the S strap. I said, oh, okay, well, you know, that's something that probably most guys won't get. I was like, that'll definitely have a different fit. Most packs that I'm trying will probably have the uh, J strap. Uh, so in terms of this nerve and this pain, let me try something that, you know, probably most guys don't do. But then I said, you know what, what, I'll just try their default standard first. 
uh, default strap and, and see how it goes and it, and it worked out well so uh, guys and, and ladies out there just if you I don't know if that situation is something that you're dealing with some kind of nerve or pain or anything's not sitting right um, it's pretty cool that the company has two strap options and one of the things I really like is uh, you may have some apprehension about buying a pack from you know a place where you can't really try it on and of course you can get all this information off their site but um, you, you can buy it um, and then if it doesn't work you just return it I mean so if you want to go so far as to try with one strap option you know put on some weight of course treat it good you know don't rough it up or anything keep the pack in good shape if it doesn't work you send it back and you say hey listen can I get the same pack but can you try, get, put on the other straps for me um, you can do the same thing with the hip belt if you go on their site you see they have all different sizes of hip belt and so yes it's not there in the store for you but you can customize it more than you can customize and there's choices you can make there that you can't make in a lot of other packs the only downside being is that you're gonna to have to wait a little bit to maybe send it back if it doesn't work out the first time and then get another configuration so there's definitely a pro and a con there um, but just something to know about the company if you don't know about that already apart from that guys um, some more storage things I'll just let you know like these pockets here are huge these are uh, smart water bottles, those are really tall, uh, one liter bottles, and as you can see, each side, not only does it hold them in this dimension well, but look at how high it comes up. So there's no chance of these things being able to fall out. Of course you have these, uh, these zip ties here, uh, not zip ties, but you have these, these pull ties, uh, they're kind of an elastic, and you can just pull them with one hand, you lock in place, but what I really like about this, again, storage and functional storage you have pockets but not just rudimentary not just put on there for the sake of having a pocket well designed uh, the pockets are this uh, more robust material here some I forget that it's like a Kodora I forget the um, the rating of it but it's very very tough stuff while still being pretty light but uh, you can see if you wanted to you could put two liters here two liters on the other side if you're doing, you know, desert or very dry, arid environment hiking, you could load this thing up with, if you had an internal bladder, I mean, you could probably load this thing up to two, one, two, three, four, you could probably do five, six, and even seven or eight on the inside. You could really load this thing up with water. Um, the front also has the ability to carry water. You got these little guys here, and so the top of the water bottle goes in here and clips on and the bottom one goes like that but um, that's kind of a you can get all that stuff off their site that's just basic features <coughs> again just looking at some more of the carrying capabilities here um, I'm just going on a hike it was a kind of a short hike so I brought some heavy stuff but this again I want to show you how much stuff you can load into this pack here uh, in this sock here is actually a a saw viver. It's that uh, it's that aluminum saw. So I just keep it in here. So no no case of the uh, the metal uh, ripping anything. So I have a saw viver. I have a uh, jungle primitive. This is for batoning wood. And then I have my tent poles, all in this one pocket. And this works out fantastically because as you can see the tent poles, I can you know cinch them down with this strap. And these other two guys just sit in there perfectly because of the depth of the pocket. If this pocket was not deep like this, I wouldn't be able to do it. But, you know, these are the things that you figure out once you own it. It's not just about, you know, every pack has a pocket. So many pockets, again, even on the side pockets, it's like that little flap. It's like you can barely stick anything in there. And then when you load up the body of the pack, it pushes into that pocket area. And it's essentially a non-functional pocket. The trick here is to actually cut out materials, to like cut it out in this dimension and cut it out there so that even if the pack is full, you still have cubic inches, you still have volume in there. You don't want it to just be a flat piece of material. I never can understand why the manufacturers do that. It, it, it just boggles my mind. Um, let's see, just personal experiences, guys. The pack is rated for 35 pounds. That's probably what I bring it to a lot of times. Um, Never over though. Most of my trips now, if I'm going out for three or four days or between two and four days, I'm looking at about anywhere between high 20s to mid 30s is about where I peak out now. 
and the pack is really, really comfortable. Uh, it's as comfortable as it could be to carry 35 or 30 pounds on your back. I mean, I just love it. It, it just carries so, so well. Uh, again, in comparison to where I'm coming from, I had the, uh, the REI Crush Trail 70, and there was the Kelty Coyote, and, you know, they always market those, those bigger, heavier packs as, you know, having great suspension, and it carries comfortably, and I got to move on from that. Nothing carries more comfortably than having less weight. <laughs> That's the main thing, and uh, getting your pack down, and your sleeping system, and, you know, the big three, getting all that down is infinitely more, more comfortable than getting a, a five pound pack that has a, a good suspension system. So, um, yeah, super, super comfortable. Um, and it's stock configuration as I have it here, it comes in at two pounds, seven ounces. Um, again, this is stuff you can get online, but I guess I'll just mention it. The cubic volume, I was just looking, I had to remind myself of all these numbers, is 4,200 cubic inches. But that's for everything. That's like for the main body, that's for the side pockets, the pet belt pockets, and the uh, back mesh elastic pockets, 4,200 all around. Um, the main body, of this main compartment is, um, I forget the cubic inches, but I just did the calculation. It's about a 40 liter pack, if you want to think about it like that. Before all your little, little pockets, the main compartment here is about a 30, it's actually 39 and change liters. Um, but it's, it's, it feels cavernous. When you, it's got this roll top enclosure, and I mean, when it's all the way up, you know, it's so big. You can just, you know, I've, I've had it all the way to the top too, it's not a problem. You just roll it once or twice and you close it up. Um, only thing, I guess the only thing I'm not really in love with, and I do mean that literally, like I love everything about this pack, I just, I, I'm so, so happy with it, I, I hope it lasts forever, I, I don't see myself ever wanting to, to get rid of it, I just, it makes me smile every time I'm out there, I'm just, so much better than my other ones, but the only thing I don't love about it is this, um, back panel, and I like it, I like it, I'd say on a scale of 1 to 10, it's like an 8. The only thing I don't like is that when the pack is really loaded up, this does get kind of tight. I wish they would cut a little bit more material here, similar to the, all the other pockets, how if you cut out a little bit of extra material on the sides. But this one here, I know when I have my pack fully loaded, it's kind of hard to get in and out of there, even with nothing in it yet. So, um, yeah, this, like you, you totally don't even need this, um, or I don't need this bungee thing here. Um, because just the pressure of the pack just forces whatever's in here to be stuck in there. Um, assuming that you're loading up the whole pack, I'm, I guess if you were barely loading up the inside, like I have now, you know, it would be looser. Like right now, it's pretty loose. So, but that's a small, small quibble. Very, very small. Um, I still load this up. It's, it's still functional. It's just kind of tight to get into. But uh, that's not the end of the world by any means. So, um, yeah, everybody. Um, like I said, it's not a full, every little nut and bolt. Go to this site or check out some of the other reviews. But I just wanted to share a few of my uh, experiences um, and uh, things that I've experienced, you know, with the shoulder and everything else. And, uh, yeah, it's just a, the ULA circuit is a really, really great pack. Um, if you're on the fence, I would encourage you to try one. Take advantage of that return policy if you have to. But uh, super, super comfortable. And getting this... And, and getting away from kind of some of the, the mainstream ones. Um, and I did try others. I, I, I'll even mention this, right, the last thing. I tried others that I didn't make a video of. I'm sure there's people out there saying, oh, there's lots of other good ones. I could not find one that just sat right on me and uh, certainly couldn't find it for this weight. So, um, yeah, I just, I can't say enough good stuff about this pack, guys. So, the ULA Circuit, fantastic pack. Um, you know, give it a try.